There's two ways to find the media library. If you hover over content, you'll see there's a media link here. So you can either click straight into the media library here or add a media item from this menu. Alternatively, click content and then from the content dashboard, there's this media link here. What you're looking at here is a chronological list of all media items. So media items is either a document, an image or a remote video. So you'll see a file name, document, image or video listed under type, who authored it, so who uploaded it, whether it's published, unpublished, when it was last updated. There's a delete button here and you can edit the item using the edit link there. You can also click multiple items and perform different actions using this list here. So you can either delete them, publish them, save them or unpublish them. You then just click apply to selected items. So that's quite useful if you're doing more than one thing at the same time. This, this is the search. So if you're looking for file name, you know that it's something to do with Abbey House Hotel. If you put the word Abbey in, or if you knew it was in the file name, it would come up. So that's useful. There's also this filter here for documents, images, and remote videos. You just want to see that type of media item. You can see published or unpublished only, and you can filter by language. You can also change the table to a grid if you prefer that view. In terms of adding a new item, there's an add media button here, click that. Then you can see you can add a document, image or remote video. It's pretty straightforward. You click choose file and go to whatever it is that you want to upload. Click upload. This green message is coming up because it's telling me this file already exists. So it's appended a three to the end. So that's just a warning message. You then add some description text, so approved premises license terms and conditions. You can see here the description may be used as the label of the link to the file, so you'll see later when we insert documents, it will use that text uh, as a way of using that as the link text. You can add a log revision log message, you can change the URL, you can change the authoring information and you can either unpublish or publish it. Adding the image is pretty similar. You browse to the image. Again, this is going to show me a warning message because this file already exists. So it's appended a three to the end of the file name. You then add a name. So again, this is just describing the image that Abbey House Hotel. Then you add some alt text, so this just explains what alt text is, just explains what a screen reader might be um, reading out or what it, what it sees in the image. Under crop image, there's some crop ratios if you want to have a look at those. You can either publish or unpublish the image. Again, add a log message, change the URL, and this is the authoring information. The third thing you can add is a remote video. So this is, as it says here, you can link to media from the following services, YouTube or Vimeo. So you just go to YouTube or Vimeo, get the code, put it in here, the URL, and it will uh, create a link to that video. So if you wanna go back to the media library, just go to content media. The other thing I just wanted to show you was this files tab here. This is a list of all files. I don't use it that much, but it is useful if you want to know file sizes. Again, if you insert a document from the media library, it will append that file size to the end of the link text. You can also see how many places that um, item is being used. To actually add an item into the into a page from the media library. If I just open up a blank page here, just call these test and test, you'll see within the body field, um, you this, there's two ways you can add things. So if you wanted to, if you were writing a piece of text 
um, you could say before you apply, please download the terms and conditions. And then you just manually write the file size. So you could go back to the, um, you could go to it here actually, and you could, it would tell you what the file size was. You could include it in the link. So we could say this was 161. And then you can make that the, the um, link text, open up a, a link and if you start typing the file name, you'll see it's listed here. So this is the one because we know it's got the three at the end. So you just click that, save. And that has created a link to the file. So if we just save that page, you'll see that it's here. And if I click that, it will open up the file. The other way to add items is direct from the media library. So this this button here is set for media library. This opens up this dialog box where you can add images, documents from remote video. So you can either add a new one direct from here, or this is the one we just added. So you would just tick that and click insert selected. Same with remote videos. You could either add a new um, URL here, or if they were any, there's none actually in here, but they would be listed here. You could add them. And then finally documents, you can either add a document straight from here or you can tick this box here and it will insert this file. In terms of what it'll look like, it'll actually say the text that's written here. So it will say approved premises licenses, terms and conditions, and it will have this um, file size extension on the end of the document. So with documents, the, there are two ways to do it. I prefer the way I just showed you here because normally I'm including the link in part of a sentence and I don't necessarily always want the text that I used in the media library. But if you were listing lots of documents in a row, it might be easier just to insert them straight from the media library so you don't you can just use the text that was used when it was uploaded. But either either one works. It's really up to you how which one you prefer. So that is all I was going to say about the media library. If you are interested in any other local quadruple videos, there's other ones to check out in the channel. And if you click the subscribe button, you'll be alerted if we add any new videos. Thank you for your time.